Hello people, this is Budridge, it's a new video, I call it Sublime Text, what you need to know. Or, why, <laughs> whatever, Sublime Text, what you need to know, that's uh, the name of the video. Um, let's just dig into it. I would like to talk about Sublime. I use Sublime, it's my main editor. Um, it have been so for a very long time. Before I started using Windows or Linux, was on Linux back then. I didn't know that much programming, but I started to to fill around with different languages like Python, a lot of ACK, uh, Auto Hotkey, uh, HTML, CSS, the normal web stuff. You know, a bunch of different languages, and I needed a, a, a editor that that could handle. Um, unpredictable development so to speak you know you never know if you and I wanted an editor that that um, I could stick with and I I, I start I, I tested out sublime and I, I found it very very much better than anything I had ever ever used before I, I, I really tried vim back then but I really didn't couldn't get it to work well on Windows and um, I didn't really uh, understood what was so good about it. Now I understand that, but we will come to that later. But I, I use Sublime and I, I I don't know, I will probably be stuck with this forever. And the text editor is, is like, um, it's a very, 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 it, it's the most important uh, application that you use. And, and a lot of people, they stick to the same editor, you know. Maybe they have, um, maybe they are uh, Java developers and, and use, I don't know, Eclipse or whatever they use, you know. But they maybe have um, Vim or something as their main editor for everything else. And, or maybe you're a C-sharp developer using Visual Studio, but you, you kind of always fall back to um, Sublime or, or Emacs or, what, or Vim or whatever it is. We all have this, uh, I, I recently wa watched a video about a guy who had been using uh, Emacs for 35 years or something like that. It's, you, 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 they, 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 it's hard, hard to shake, shake this. And it's, it's because you invest so much, e even if there would be better editors, you don't want to change when you, you know all the quirks and you know how much time it takes to to really get to know an editor you know learning vim the navigation h j k l you can do that in five minutes but really really learning vim i uh, even if i don't know vim i know that it would take me years uh, to to know it as well as i know sublime and maybe those years would be worth it maybe not but uh, I just like Sublime and the th whatever. I'm using Sublime, you don't have to, but I'm gonna make a couple of videos about what I know about it and, and how I have set it up because I have, if, if you have seen my previous video here, um, you know that I've been working on this Budlime thing here. Oops. Uh, uh, which is a repository with all my sublime settings and scripts I have created and some wikis. I'm, I'm starting to documenting all, all of this. I don't know. We, we'll see what happens. Maybe I, I will uh, give Emacs a, a serious uh, run soon. I, I have planned it and I, I have played around with it a bit a couple of, couple of um, weeks ago. And it's also very, very cool. But Emacs is, is that that's like that's a bottomless pit of of uh, <laughs> customizations and and uh, tweakings. But so is Sublime. It, it's like it, it's it never never stops. And I think Vim is the same thing. You know, at least for for some some people, people like me, I I, I would just uh, go crazy with uh, tweaking and creating my own plugins and stuff. Whatever, let's talk about Sublime. It's not free, it's not open source, it costs $80 for a license, but it's free to try it and the evaluation time is uh, unlimited, at least for now. But it has been so, f so since uh, Sublime was released and it will probably always stay like that. But it's, uh, I'm not, 
I cannot uh, vouch for it, but but it's been like that. You 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 can try it for free, and the only drawback is that every 10-15 times you save a file, you'll get a little nag window, a pop-up window. Um, it's a normal window, wink wink, i3 window rules, <clears throat> whatever. Uh, but you just uh, kill that window or. Uh, click cancel or you click purchase and you, it will take you to this page where you can enter your, your credit card information and uh, purchase license and that license is a lifetime license so you never have to do it anything again but it's quite expensive especially when you compare it with uh, free programs like Vim uh, or Emacs or VS Code or Atom or more or less any other <laughs> editor it's a lot more expensive but in my opinion this is not that much money you know for, especially for for the software the the program that you use i i use it like it's almost disgusting how much i i how much time i spend with just my text editor which is sublime so it is like um, sublime and me we are uh, kind of married in a way and I'm, I'm not I don't want to divorce Sublime not now I when I know know her so well you know and uh, Sublime has actually always been good to me that's the thing it's it's have a lot of weird weird design decisions and strangeness to it but it also have it's incredibly fast it's incredibly stable it never weirds out uh, unpredictably <laughs> um, it's a very 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 good program and it's very different from for example uh, VS Code or Atom even if they might look kind of similar they are completely different um, Sublime is built from scratch in C++ while Atom and VS Code is built upon Electron, meaning it is both very bloated, uh, draining a lot of resources. I'm talking about VS Code and Atom now, uh, and they are also incapable of doing many things that you can do with uh, Sublime and other editors, like opening very large files. It's more or less impossible, and searching within multiple files, it's almost then Sublime is one of the best editors for it. And there are many, many good advantages of Sublime, but there are also many weird things. But I'm going to show you those weird things now in these videos. It will not like, I, I don't know why I'm doing this really, uh, because I, I, I don't want you to, to, to buy this in a way, you know, you get free software instead. I, I bought this before I, I, I was a free tard. And I, I, I don't think I would buy it today. I, I would probably just uh, learn Emacs well or something like that. But at the time it, it was logical. But I really think it's a much better choice than, than, than for example, VS Code. But VS Code is also, it's VS Code, I, I use it sometimes, it, uh, and I think that's also a very good editor. I wish it was around when I started programming and stuff. It's so much better than, than what we had like 10 years ago uh, that was free. If, if, if you, you know, it's it kind of hard to going from, uh, I don't, I know nothing. I would like to st uh, learn programming. You, you just... You open Vim and then you, you, you kind of cry yourself to sleep when you are young and stupid. But uh, these types of editors, especially VS Code, they are, they are very, very good for, for uh, to start out with. Whatever. It's available for many operating systems. For example, uh, Macintosh, uh, Apple, Windows, Linux. We are Linux. You choose your uh, package manager here, uh, I use Pac-Man and then you follow the instructions and here I don't know why they don't tell you that uh, it's important that you choose the stable branch here or channel because this is only available if you have a license. I have a license and I use this dev uh, branch but if you don't uh, you have to choose this. Then you download and install Sublime, and then you can execute it with the command Zabble. 
And it open. You saw how fast it opened there. People complain. Oh, I use Vim because it's so fast to open it. It takes less than a, a couple of milliseconds to open this window. It's very fast. Uh, no, well, now it's bare bone, bones. It's no uh, packages or plugins or anything. So it's very, very. It's lighter. It, it, it gets it a bit slower in the startup when you install a lot of packages. But we'll get to that. Um, the setting files, the configuration files, is located uh, in your .config folder. You have a, a directory called sublime-text-3, and this is where where its settings are stored. <clears throat> okay, that was the little intro. There are a couple of concepts or like fundamental uh, things that I would and uh, about sublime that you kind of need to understand uh, what you need to know you know uh, I'm not really sure where I want to start or I want to start with projects but I, I I've tried to record this video so many times now and it's not the the, the best way to start uh, but let's start here preferences settings it opens this weird stuff here uh, a double uh, a new window with a split this is like one sublime window with the uh, two files open at the same time you can do this i really I, I don't like this i use i3 and i want to use i3 for splitting my windows i don't like internal splits like this and I never have big screens with uh, uh, fancy resolution, so so this this is just inconvenient. And I I, I can't read text uh, at this small size because I'm old. Uh, I prefer uh, maybe 18 or 16 points at least. Let's uh, bump this up. And you saw there you have you have seen this concept. You know the, you have the default file that is read only. You copy the settings that you're interested in to your user setting file here and then you can edit them. And as you can see, you just have to change them and then they are in effect immediately. Really nice. Um, or it is not really nice. I hate this uh, split uh, ex new extra window with the split view and stuff. It's uh, uh, really annoying, especially when you're on the tiling window manager. Uh, if you have windows, I have set a rule so all new windows that are uh, floating by default. Um, so then it's not that big of a problem, but uh, imagine if it would tile itself with this split window, you, you cannot read anything, you know, if it would look uh, something like, uh, well, maybe not there, but here, this is not so easy to manage these settings and then you, you know, I don't like it. Another weird thing here is that if you, uh, by mistake, close this window uh, from the menu here or pressing Ctrl Q, which is the default quit, which you might think is the correct way to close, uh, close this new window. If you do this, that will close the whole application. And then you are, oh man, you open it again with Subble. What happens is that it opens uh, both both uh, windows that were open before but without for some reason the default settings here but the, the setting is just weirdness all over so but uh, mo most uh, window managers have a little cross icon so you can close the window from here or you can uh, maybe have a close window uh, kill window thing i think i can close windows with middle mouse button on the title bar set it up in i3 let's see if it works it worked so that's that's the thing but if you close from from the menu then you get weird results and that's just one of the uh, drawbacks with having multiple windows I really really dislike uh, multiple windows one application one main window all child windows should be inside that window as some kind of tabs uh, in a perfect world but we are not living in a perfect world we are living in this world which is far from perfect okay we edited some settings there 
if we look here in packages, this is also th this is one of, one of the most annoying thing. I I don't know. There are many annoying things, but the naming in Sublime, they name everything in the weirdest, stupidest way. So we have installed packages, nothing there. Then we have packages. Inside packages, we have a, a directory called user. Uh, and this is where that preferences uh, file is located that we just edited. And you see here, these are comments. Uh, it's in JSON format. You can see the syntax down here. You can change it. These are all the available pre-installed syntaxes or, or languages. But uh, settings files, and, and here's another annoying naming convention. All uh, Sublime files are named like this. The extension is extremely long. Dot sublime dash settings. That is what the normal settings files are called. Then you have dot sublime key map. Then you have uh, dot sublime syntax and so on. A lot of weird, weird long extensions. And I really dislike this. And you cannot uh, rename these files uh, in, in, in a good way. But we will get to that later. You have the same uh, way with key bindings here. And the, and the, the, this is why I really dislike this system. You see, the, the, this is how it looks like when you install Sublime. You get all these key bindings are pre-configured for, for your convenience, you know. Uh, I think that's really stupid to have all... Uh, and the only way to change them, or only way, but... Is to copy them over here and then you modify them in this user part. And... This is this has become one a thing that I always do is disabling all key combinations that I don't understand what they're doing or that I just don't want. I want to disable as much as possible so I don't uh, by mistake click press something and as you can see it's very easy to do so since it's one million of them. I'd rather have no action at all happen if I would press the wrong key than some weird stuff happening, for example, exiting the window or closing the file or whatever. Sure, these are normal uh, key combinations. But to disable a command in uh, or a key binding in Sublime, since this is read only, you cannot just comment this line out. And if I co copy the, the uh, key binding to the user settings here and comment it out here, that will not disable it at all, because then this will just be uh, not be read, and it will read the, the, the key from the default map instead. So to uh, disable a key, co key binding, you add the pass command, and now this is disabled. Now nothing should happen if I press Ctrl Q. It just sends pass, which is nothing basically. But that is very, very tedious if you want to disable a lot of keys here, which I like to do. And same thing here, split windows and weirdness, weirdness, weirdness. I close this now, and now we can see I also have this key map file here. And you see, I find this better to have all the settings in, in open like this. But now I will show you one really 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 strange uh, thing here this happened when they uh, upgraded from version 2 to sublime 3 you know you have your setting file you add some um, comments to it you know and uh, maybe a couple of blank lines maybe a new comment here and then maybe a new setting here Do this there I changed the font you this is nice um, then you have this thing uh, instead of changing settings here all the time you can open what's called the command palette the default key combination is control shift P and that opens this uh, list here with the, that have more or less all the commands available in Sublime. Some of them have uh, key combinations and then you can see them. 
And if you, this is this is actually really good. Uh, if you change a key combination, then it will change in this list. So this is a good way to to learn and and find out new commands and stuff. But some commands doesn't even have a key combination. One of those commands is uh, changing the UI uh, the uh, user interface. Let's say we want to change the color color scheme. Change here, and here you can see we preview them without changing it. If I would press escape, then no change would happen. But let's say I like this breakers theme. I hit enter. What happened with my uh, preferences file is whenever Sublime changes this preferences file, which is thus when you, for example, change this uh, color scheme, then it will remove all, um, all comments. It will remove all blank lines. And it will also sort the lines in alphabetical order. In this is your user setting file. And look here, you know, you kind of want, uh, this is a default file with a lot of good comments. And as you can see, there are like um, hundreds of settings you, you can do. So it can be nice to group them and add some personal comments to your per personal file. No. Sublime will constantly do this and, and this happens all the time when you update the package, when you change the color scheme, when whatever you do, it changes, uh, it removes the comments and, and formats the preferences file. Very, very, very annoying. I was so close to changing editor. I was so happy with, with Sublime 3. It had a lot of good features and, and fixes that, that were missing from Sublime 2, but this thing made me really really sad and angry but there there is a, a, a good solution to to circumvent this but this is just it goes on and on uh, with weird weird stuff like this it's like uh, uh, sometimes it feels like you and sublime are 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 uh, going in different directions but uh, you can win you can tame this beast that is sublime but this is just, you know, sugar things, you know, editing settings and stuff. And that is weird. The, the, the extensions are weird. The double windows are weird. The overwriting stuff is strange. But everything else in Sublime, it were, what, what it does, uh, the multiple cursors, uh, the, the... Um, the extremely fast file search, the, the good editor, the very, very good font rendering, the extremely advanced uh, syntax highlighting thing, which I'm not a big fan of, but it, it it's like the best, best in class. It's best in class in many fields, except these, uh, this stuff. And there are, is, of course, ways around this. And that is what this series is, is going to be about. Uh, I'm going to show you how I have set up Sublime and all the things I have learned during the years I have been using this. And I don't care if you uh, will choose to use Sublime or not, but you will maybe at least see a bit how it works. And maybe get some ideas, you know. And I, I watch a lot of... Um, uh, YouTube clips and I, I listen to podcasts and, and I read a lot of blogs about Emacs and Vim and other editors. I, I, I just find this editing uh, code, <laughs> I think it's one, one of my uh, interests, you know, my, so, something I'm really interested in. And you always learn something even if it's not uh, from the editor you use. Uh, you can hear about a function in Emacs and then you see if there you can do the same thing in Sublime and blah 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 it's and vice versa so maybe you will learn something and maybe you you will actually try Sublime but I actually don't care and I uh, in one way uh, I almost don't want want you to but I want to make these videos because I have so much to say uh, about this so why wouldn't I Okay, that was uh, kind of the intro to this. Next video, we will look into uh, how to organize these settings, how we can uh, do uh, solve this issue with uh, the auto formatting and the disabling uh, default options and, and key bindings and stuff like that, and set up a, a, 
a simple project and look a bit into project. Maybe it's two videos or all that content. We'll, we'll see. But this was like an intro. Uh, watch it, hate it, like it, love it, subscribe it, comment it, lurk on the Bud Lime repository. This is uh, here you can find um, if, if you want this series spoiled. You can read about my settings and I have written a lot of articles here that I never published. Some of them are, are like a year old about Sublime and things that I... Many of these things I will uh, make videos about and stuff. This is nice also. Awesome here. You can see some... I'm, I'm uh, collecting some good uh, articles, screencast. Here I have messed up the table, but whatever. And uh, some recommended packages, documentation. This can be very good to know uh, immediately. Sublime uh, text official uh, support here. You can find um, the official documentation here, Sublime text. It's quite good. It's quite easy to read. Uh, not long at all. These are just single pages, all of them, and they are. They, you read this in a couple of minutes, you know. But then you also have this sub uh, Sublime Text unofficial documentation, which is a very good resource. What is this now? Um, God damn it! What whatever? It, it, it I never seen that before. Maybe it's uh, HTTPS. Don't know why this is showing up like this, but but it, it, it shouldn't be a problem. But this is much better. The unofficial documentation you have a lot of knowledge uh, there. Uh, it, it's much more detailed uh, than the official documentation. So that's that's a good place to start. A good bookmark to have is this uh, Sublime Text unofficial documentation. But uh, I'll see you in the next video where we look into how to solve those weird uh, uh, issues that I just described. Thank you for watching. Bye.